To the Lock Shop with Nielsen and Hustler, powered by Coolback Canada. Hey, what is up, Lock Shoppers? Welcome to the show. Uh, Huss and P. Greggy with you today. And we'll be rolling uh, this way for the next uh, week or so as a Dusty on Daddy Duty. Big holiday, although he's <laughs> jonesing already. He's already sending picks in. He's still thinking about the slate tonight in Major League <laughs> Baseball. I'm sure we'll get some uh, some nice contributions from Dusty on the road. And uh, he is going to, I think, put Padres Jays, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, is it is it the Jays that they're playing, Pat? I, I think that's what he said, I which pretty sure. seems pretty seems pretty early for a Blue Jays West Coast swing. Um, but I'm I'm pretty sure. I think if I check the schedule and remember what he said, I think it's like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So he must be heading one of the games on the weekend. I hear that stadium out in San Diego is beautiful. Um, so <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm starting to think that Dusty m- might have actually scheduled this trip around the Blue Jays. Um, but uh, <laughs> no, in all seriousness, a much deserved uh, holiday with the family. I'm sure they're going to have a great time down in San Diego. But, hey, if you can parlay it with a ball game, and if it's uh, the Blue Jays in town as well, uh, all that much better. Listen, we're going to get uh, into uh, hockey. Lots to talk about coming out of last night in regards to the National Hockey League playoffs. Some games tonight on the docket. Uh, and, of course, RBC Heritage picks. we got to get to the golf as well. But just while we're mentioning the Jays, yes, the Jays. So they're finishing up this afternoon. Gosman and Stroh. 207 yeah. m and then getaway day off day tomorrow and then three games in san diego and if i recall i think he's doing the afternoon game so sunday he's right behind the jays bench folks so uh if you're watching the jays game keep on sunday out, afternoon bro. keep your eye out for the <laughs> for the nielsen clan having a great time a great time down there um okay listen I, i'm pumped about the golf we've kind of wrapped the masters we got to get to the rbc we'll do that kind of in the second half of the show holy smokes that was a wild night in the nhl last night and listen we'll get to the caps making the playoffs is arguably the worst playoff team in recent nhl history but pat you being there in the center of the universe with the leafs what uh what's the feeling around the leafs after losing to florida but Boston basically tanking their last two games. It certainly seems like they wanted a piece of the Leafs after going 4-0 this season. And uh, we've been getting ready for this Leafs-Florida series for about a month or more. And now all of a sudden, it's the Boston Bruins and Toronto Maple Leafs going at it. What, what's the reaction around your neck of the woods to, to what happened last night? Well, first and foremost, I don't know if it's a full-blown tank. I mean, they did pepper... Anton Forsberg with about 36 shots on net. Uh, he just stood on his head. I think the Sens didn't even crest 20 shots on goal. Uh, but it, it is what it is. I mean, you're, you're going to have to beat a good team either way. You're going to have to beat Boston. You're going to have to beat Florida. You're going to have to beat either of those teams uh, to move on. So there's scar tissue with both these teams. There's no doubt. Look what happened last year against Florida, against this group, this identical group. But I think when you take away the scar tissue with the Bruins and what's happened this year, I think on paper it you probably would prefer to to face the Bruins. But unfortunately, it's just it's it's the Boston Bruins. It's the boogeyman in the closet. I think vibes in Leafland are a little bit low right now, just with how the Leafs have kind of played over the last you know three four games. Everyone just been feeding Austin Matthews. That's all that's really seemed like that they've cared about is 34 getting getting 70. And I really hated Sheldon respo- uh, Sheldon's response when he did hit 69. He was kind of saying, you know, it's great. 
but then kind of went on a little bit of a tangent saying how it's a distraction and then said what ultimately when when someone's going for a a major milestone like that it's fun to see it's fun to see one of the best goal scorers in recent history go off like that so maybe it is a distraction maybe it has been a distraction maybe guys are gripping the stick trying to find 34 more than they normally do um although like if you play for the toronto maple leafs i'd suggest passing the puck to 34 that seems like a pretty good option yeah. on any evening but maybe it has been a distraction maybe maybe it is and i thought um, he's I thought Brian Hayes had a great take on overdrive. Was it yesterday, the day before? He said, if I'm Sheldon Keefe, all I'm talking about is getting Austin Matthews 70. That'll be the topic. We'll just talk about that. We won't have to talk about the playoff history of the core, yeah. anything else, because those aren't I, I thought that was a pretty I thought that was a pretty good take. Now, everything's changed. That was all thinking the Leafs were gonna play in Florida hang out in Florida for a few days, and then start against against uh, again against the Panthers. Don't envy the travel secretaries of all those teams oh, that had made, made no. their plans and then had to completely change things out afterwards. But just as far as the Bruins, and you are so, – like, let's think about this. They needed to get a point in one of these last two games. They go into Washington on Monday – Four shots in the first, four shots in the second, eight in the third, 16 shots on net, and they were shut out. And then last night, you are correct. They did bring it in the third period and outshot Ottawa 23 to two. They had three shots in the first period and nine in the second. It's like they literally thought that it was done and then realized it wasn't. And then tried to put the foot on the gas and uh, and go from there. From a Boston standpoint, though, I mean, listen, it, that division is so tough. It, it's sort of six of one, half a dozen of the other. Because the Lightning, it's not like the Lightning are a, an easy out in the first no. round by no stretch of the imagination. And if anything, the Bruins have a lot of confidence playing against the Leafs. Although, I do look at that Boston lineup compared to other Leafs-Bruins matchups in the past. And at least on paper, I mean, listen, look at what they did in the standings. That is a legit team. They had a great year, and the record speaks for themselves. But they're certainly not as scary as they've been before with guys like Bergeron and Krejci in the lineup. No, and uh, I think it was Ben Ennis last night of, uh, of the Fan 590. He tweeted out that the last time the Toronto Maple Leafs played the Boston Bruins in a playoff series. Ron Hainsey had the third most ice time in that series for the Toronto Maple Leafs. HR is... hockey related Ron. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um the the team is a lot different. The team he's even seems, and I should say seems. I'm not going to curse myself here. The team also seems different than it was in years past. There's a little more sandpaper. There's a little more bite there are some guys like Bertuzzi, who last year proven that he's a playoff player. Max Domi, I know he's been hurt. They're trying to get him healthy for the postseason. He's a guy that plays with some jam. He had a great playoff run with Dallas last year. So there's guys that have proven that they can step up. Um, you look, even look at their back end. Simon Benoit, he's got a lot of bite to his game. Um, Jake McCabe, he's a tough uh, you know, blue liner. Joel Edmondson, they picked him up. He he's a tough guy as well. There is a lot more sandpaper. There's a lot more toughness, and it, it it doesn't really, to me, lead me to believe that like this is a Bruins team that's going to be able to just walk all over them. Heck, if you if you watch no Florida yesterday, Leafs weren't backing down in the scrums like what we've seen in years past. Like so, but with that being said, Florida and Boston are still really good hockey teams. They were going to have to pass them anyways, and. It, it, this is so cliche, but like you gotta slay the dragon to get to the princess, anyways. Like you, you gotta get over your demons. You, you know they did that with Tampa. Tampa was the boogeyman in the closet in recent years. Boston was the years before that. So it's almost like a mental hurdle that actually might help this group if they can get through Boston first. Mind you, they'll, they'll probably have Florida or Tampa Bay uh, standing in their way. Two other really good teams. Just the way that this is set up, man, it's like, I get it. It's so funny, though. And I, I hate this. I hate this playoff 
uh, setup that they have. The but with that being said, if you line up the East one through eight, it's the same. It's literally the same playoff. Okay, one through out. eight. I was <laughs> yeah. just looking. I was just looking, and this will sort of take us. So, so basically, right now, folks, we know five of the matchups in the first round of the playoffs. The Rangers are taking on the Capitals. The Hurricanes are taking on the New York Islanders. Panthers and Lightning in the Battle of Florida. And the Bruins and Leafs. In the West, Winnipeg is taking on the Colorado Avalanche. The Jets have home ice. The Jets clinched home ice in the first round of the playoffs in the uh, in the game uh, last night against the Kraken. And here's and this is something we'll talk about, I guess, on tomorrow's show. And I'll hopefully have some more information based on what we hear from Rick Bonus today. The narrative around Winnipeg was okay. Well, they clinched the home ice against the Avs. Thursday means nothing. It, not quite. The Jets with that win got to 108 points. They play the Canucks first place in the Pacific with 109 points. If the Jets win that game in regulation, overtime, a shootout, because they do have the tiebreaker, they would actually have a better record than every team in the Pacific division, meaning that if they were fortunate enough to get through the Central and get to the conference final, they would have home ice in that game, in that series against anyone now they would against i mean if they were able to go through and they're playing against edmonton or vegas uh, or the wild card team they would anyways but particularly against vancouver who has been ahead of them pretty much most of the year they would be able to catch them so i'm not sure whether that changes the thoughts of both teams when it comes to what's at stake tomorrow and we'll find out what rick tockett's idea is is he going to rest guys are they going to bring everybody to winnipeg and how that all works out but for the rest of the playoffs, and this is what's, I think, keenly uh, aware of uh, all our listeners in the Edmonton area, um, there's still, we still need to find out who the Oilers' opponent is. And listen, I'm going to put this to the chat right now. Um, for all you Oilers fans or people in nasty territory, who uh, who do you want to see in the uh, in the first round of the playoffs? Now, because the Kings in typical LA fashion threw up all over themselves in the game against the wild at home on Monday night. They basically handed over the hammer to the Vegas golden Knights. The Knights beat Chicago last night. They finished with a home game against the Anaheim ducks. If they beat the ducks at home in that final game of the season, the Knights get to 100 points and it will be Edmonton and Vegas in the first round of the playoffs. The Predators have, now let's see here. The Preds, I believe, yeah, the Preds have clinched the first wild card. Even if LA wins to tie them at 99, they'll have the same regulation wins. The Preds have the regulation and overtime wins uh, breakers. So Nashville is going to be playing against the uh, the number two team, of the top. Now I look right here. This is the other thing that if Dallas loses their last game, they finish at 111. The Canucks, if they beat the Jets on Thursday, would get to 111. And the Canucks actually would end up being the number one team. So they would get the Los Angeles Kings. If they did not win the game, they're playing the Nashville Predators. So that's, again, something to think about. Like, it's weird how we didn't think that this game would mean anything. But the playoff matchups for the Canucks depend on it. And then the Vegas game, we've got the, uh, you know, we'll find out whether it's them or uh, or L.A. Um, I like it. I like the uh, North Side Sandwich, Knights all day. Vegas, Spency 5 Cincy. I want the Knights. Get them out while spleen, while Stone's spleen is still soft and open for parry shots. <laughs> um, Duck Dad, I want the Knights because it would be more entertaining to see the Oilers beat them than the Oilers beating the Kings. Oh, listen, as someone with no skin in the game for the Oilers, I'm fully with. I'm fully there. A first round series between the defending Cup champs and Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers would be phenomenal. That is, that's the best case scenario for hockey fans. I think we know what happens if LA gets that spot. The Oilers do what they've done the last couple of years. Like I don't think LA is as good this year as they've been the last couple of years, and Edmonton's handled them. But 
the fact that we might be able to get Pat a different matchup and one that would be prime time viewing for any NHL fan. Good. And I'm sort of with a lot of the people in the nasty chat. I think, you know, you got to go through Vegas probably at some point, if you want to win the cup, but coming out of the West, especially in that division, considering their season so far, I'd rather get them now as opposed to the second or third round. If they're able to build some momentum and get their guys back. I think you're muted. Did you mute yourself? Or did you, maybe you got muted by the, uh, it does say mute on the uh, thing. Zach, I don't know if you can do that or either that or pop up or pop back out. I'm going to look at some of these, uh, these chats while we try to get Patty back. Um, Barry the cheater. I'm good with the Knights, but the Oilers are focused and want to give some payback. Yeah, no doubt about that. Um, the PLD trade for LA took a ton of their depth away, making them overall worse, I think. No doubt. Well, not to mention PLD has been an absolute disaster so far this year. I mean, he is he's on the fourth line right now. And I can tell you that Gabe Velarde is the man when it comes to the Winnipeg power play. Alex Iafalo is going to be a pain in the ass for whoever's playing against him in the playoffs. And uh, Kapari not really playing for the Winnipeg Jets. Um, I'm just going to let uh, host. I can hear you type, Pat. That was just a glitch. Okay, yeah, just uh, pop them back in, uh, Zach, if you can. Pat's ready and good to go and uh, and sounding good. Um, anyways, welcome back. I don't know what happened there. But, you know, just that that scenario for the yeah. Oilers in Vegas uh, and again, we'll, we're waiting on series lines for the ones that are already done, as well as these new yeah. ones. Once we get the matchup, I would think. What? L let me ask you this, and I'll put this into the chat as well. Let's say that Vegas wins their last game. It's Edmonton, Vegas, first round playoffs. Let's do a little guess the lines here. What do we think the series line will be for Edmonton versus Vegas? I, I will take a guess right off the bat. I'm going to go. Edmonton minus one thirty, Vegas plus one ten. Yeah, I I was thinking that it was going to be like minus one twenty five, maybe even one twenty okay. for Edmonton. Just knowing that cool bet knows it's a heavy heavy dose of uh, of Edmonton betters here in Canada. Um, a lot of the health uncertainty for Vegas. It would be nice to know if any guys when they're expected back. Um, it's like it all indications sound again. They are going to get some buddies back, but not all of them. And how healthy are they really going to be? I think that's probably a, a safe assumption. Like, I think it's going to be a, a like, I, I don't see, I don't see either team. You got to assume Edmonton's going to be the favorite, but you know, I, I really don't know if, if Edmonton would be more than a minus 130. I think my minus 130 to 120 is probably a safe range and maybe close to even money on the other side for Vegas. And I bet you, and, and no offense to the Edmonton uh, fans in the chat, there's probably going to be some steam coming in on Vegas just based on the fact of that number, not necessarily because they don't believe in the Oilers, but if you could get a team like Vegas, despite their injuries, you know, at plus money or close to even money, I, I think there's going to be people hopping on that as well, which would be a good thing for Edmonton betters because if more steam comes on Vegas at the start, you'll probably eventually get a better price on Edmonton. Again, this is just a guess. I, I don't know. We should be having series prices up very soon for the ones that are um, already set in stone. And normally, like what I was saying before, I, I somehow got muted there. Normally, like, you know, as series progress, teams get, you know, more banged up. And a lot of the times in the postseason for the National Hockey League, it's the teams that can stay the most healthy. I think for Vegas, 100%, you want to jump on them now because in a round, a round and a half, some of these guys are going to come back. And it's almost like they're going to be adding new bodies in the lineup that are going to be fresh and ready to go. They're going to be more dangerous as they progress. So, when you look at that LA team, I mean, I was pretty high on them to start the year. I thought they looked really good. Um, obviously, the PLD trade, like you said, uh, has fallen flat on their faces. So I, I think 
you know, even from a matchup standpoint, I think LA is probably a better matchup. But again, you're going to have to get through Vegas at some point. You might as well jump on them now when they're the most wounded. Well, uh, Y.E.G. Welder guy does make a, a point that resonates here in the Central Division. The only good thing about getting the Kings is that the Knights would be in the Central and maybe Dallas can get rid of them for all of Great us. Point. What, what, what's Great wild point. about that is, can you imagine if that if that happens? If, say, Vegas tanks the game... Uh, Listen, that's a very, very tough spot to go, the travel through, and then, you know, Dallas, and then the winner of Colorado, Winnipeg. But the point is well taken. Um, you get them out, and the only way you'd see them is that if they're actually able to get through 306 or 8-point teams um, when we come to the, uh, to the Central Division. So, well, this is, you know, while we're talking about the Oilers, let's get to these games tonight. Because... As far as I can tell, uh, the Oilers have absolutely nothing to play for. They uh, got, you know, they waxed the Sharks the other day. They have 104 points. If they won both, they'd get to 108. They'd still be second. If they lost both of their games, nobody can catch them. They are locked in in the second spot. They'll have home ice and play games one and two in Edmonton. Tonight, they're on the road. They are one of the only teams... I think they might be the only team left in the league that still has two games left to play. So they're going back to back. They're in Arizona tonight, Pat, for the final game <laughs> of the Arizona Coyotes run in the desert, at least for now. Uh, looking at the looking at the line, the Oilers minus 182. Coyotes plus 154. Uh, I don't know how I don't well, we should. I mean, I guess later on in the day we might get some updates as to if they're gonna be resting guys or anything. I have a feeling that the coyotes are going to be playing that game well as if it's their last one. <laughs> <laughs> um and I don't know whether there's any impetus, like the oilers just want to not get any guys hurt. Yeah, like we saw Connor McDavid come back in. I'll be honest, I, I'm going to be hard-pressed not to take the plus money on the Arizona Coyotes in their final game at home, considering the Oilers have absolutely nothing to play for and another game tomorrow. I'm sure Mullet Arena will be rocking indeed with all 7,000 people. You know what, the, you know what tickets are going for for this game? No. Like close to two grand. Really? Yeah, like it's between 1,200 and two grand. We had a guest on yesterday. By the way, I think Northside said they popped in and saw the interview yesterday. Uh, Northside Sandwich. Thanks for doing that. Yeah, it was a, it was very good stuff with a guy that had been with the organization for a long time. Man, as soon as they announced this, there's going to be stuff coming out from former employees about the Murillo era that is going to blow people's minds. That'll be yeah. another story while we're all focusing in on uh, while we're all focusing in on what's going on with the Stanley Cup playoffs. But there is, I mean, this is the ticket right now. I mean, this people were blindsided by this, and there are a lot of people that have loved having the Coyotes there yeah. and doing what they can do to get in there. I just think the Oilers are not going to give a bleep in this one, and I kind of think that the Coyotes are going to do everything they can, at least to leave a good impression to reward their fans one more time for everything that they've been through while they get ready to pick up and go to Utah. Yeah, and and again, I was a little bit tongue in cheek. I do understand there is a small fan base that is passionate, that is rabid there, and and yeah, they have been blindsided, and and it hasn't been the fans' fault that this has completely fallen on its on its face. It's it's been just complete ineptitude in other facets, whether it's from the league or or the city, the organization, whatever it may be. But I, I yeah, I mean, why would Edmonton, uh, you know, why, why would they have any motivation to go in here, dress all their guys? Like, I tend to, I tend to agree with you. I think that this could be a spot, especially with another game um, coming up and a big one to end the season off. I could see it being here, and like you said, the Coyotes are playing for a lot. And the fact that we're getting a plus one fifty four, hmm. uh, you know, I, I definitely wouldn't want to have it as the last leg of my parlay by any stretch yeah. of imagination. But in terms of a little bit of a sprinkle, that would be one that I'd be looking to there. I, I mean, getting to the Leafs doesn't mean absolutely anything for the Leafs. Really, doesn't mean anything for the Lightning. 
Uh, we talked about it's it about off the 70. top of the show, though. It is about 70. If if 34 is in the lineup, it's going to be a, about 70. So I think that is going to be a play for me. Shocked he didn't bury it yesterday. I did take the over in the shots. Uh, I'll probably hit that one again. I'm going to hit uh, him to score. And with that being said, I would also probably look in to see what the numbers are on a uh, on a Mitch Marner assist and uh, you know a, a Bertuzzi point, something something like that, uh, or even a Bertuzzi assist. Those guys are going to be really trying to to feed the puck to 34. So uh, I guess my my favorite plays of the day are coming in that Leafs game, and, and it's surrounding props around the big seven zero. Well, let's get to this. I mean, uh, the, the Mitch Marner assist uh, is minus 169. Austin Matthews goal. This is a bigger number than yesterday. I mean, I guess when we first talked about it on the lock shop, it was at minus 105. I made that the play of the day. Checked it later on. It had gone to minus 125. And right now it's at minus 132. Um, so, uh, and again, we still don't have confirmation of the Leafs lineup or anything like that, but I, I have no doubt that they'll let him take a run at it. Um, and yes, as you mentioned, the, the shot total. And the shot number is actually better than it was yesterday. Yesterday it was four and a half at minus 143. Today it's four and a half. The over is minus 125. Oh, I love that. I love that. <laughs> don't worry, uh, folks. Don't worry about the, the money line. <laughs> Uh, on either of this one, because I don't think we really know or if either of these teams care too much. They're locked in for their series. But the Leafs play tonight uh, certainly all circle or center around the quest for 70. Matthews, shots over 4.5, minus 125, to score, minus 132. If you think Mitchie is going to be the guy setting it up, minus 169. Four what's and what's, per, what's Bertuzzi's assist number, quickly, if you got it there, Bert, if we have one? Bert's assist number is, you got to display all, plus 156. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I'm hitting that, too. I'm definitely going to hit <laughs> that one there for sure. So uh, so there you go. I mean, uh, obviously, we can dive a little bit more into uh, to these things. What? The biggest disappointment, and I guess we didn't touch on this too much, but said that it was a possibility. The Capitals booking a spot in the playoffs on an empty net goal in a tie game <laughs> in regulation. And it was unfortunate because the timing of everything, the way, I mean, it was all happening in real time. But the Wings had gotten their point. They got it to uh, to OT, which I believe essentially eliminated Philly. But Philly didn't know that at the time. They still pulled the goalie with three minutes left. TJ Oshie scores the empty netter, eliminating Detroit and eliminating the Pittsburgh Penguins. I mean, if Washington and Detroit don't win last night. We're talking about a win and in scenario for the Pittsburgh Penguins tonight against the New York Islanders. And now, unfortunately, this is uh, just a completely nothing game. The Islanders locked in, getting ready to play the Carolina Hurricanes. And one more game. And uh, listen, the way Crosby played, and I know we've talked about it quite a bit, and we had the 6-1 to one future for Pittsburgh. We knew it was going to be tough. The way that he's been playing over the last little while, it's just a damn shame that he's not in the playoffs. And listen, I know the Caps were two and two against the Rangers this year, but does anybody think that the Washington Capitals are going to pose any sort of a threat? Like, how different is that? You win the one seed on in the East, and you get the Caps with a minus thirty-eight goal differential. Dallas could win the West. And get the Vegas <laughs> Golden Knights in the first round. It's uh, I know. You know what we need, Pat? Good old. Uh, can you imagine the one to sixteen? Oh my God! This is just just for fun here. Just for fun here. Let's see what the one to sixteen would be. The Rangers that went. We'll just base it all on what where we're at right now. Sure. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the Blues would be in the playoffs. Okay. They'd be 16. They would play the Rangers. The Islanders would play the Dallas Stars. <laughs> wild, wild matchup. Yeah. The Lightning would play the Hurricanes. LA Kings versus Florida Panthers. 
Golden Knights versus Canucks. Oh, I, oh. Predators Bruins. Jets Leafs. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> and Avalanche Oilers. Oh my God, those are some amazing series. I, when you were when you were running through that, I thought you were going to be like Boston Toronto. Like it just it doesn't <laughs> matter. It doesn't matter. We could change the format. We're still running into Boston or Florida in the first round. No, I love that idea. I know it's completely different, but the National Lacrosse League this year went to what they call a unified standings, and they got rid of divisions. They got rid of conferences. Best teams through one to fifteen. Top one to eight make the playoffs, and we're in the last week here, and every single game matters. Like, we, you know, seeding is still completely out of it, and and it, it guarantees you that the best teams in the league get in. Yeah, I know for scheduling purposes and travel purposes, it's less than ideal, but, um, I mean, the Na National Hockey League's not hurting for – for money for a lot of these teams that are in the postseason. So I, I I would love to see it. I doubt it ever happens. But, I mean, I think that would be the easiest way to assure you find the best team in the NHL is by just going 1-16. to 16. I think I'm going to lay – I'm going to sprinkle on the Penguins tonight. Um, the Penguins, it's funny. They're a road favorite, minus 127. That probably indicates that the Islanders might be resting a few guys. Sid's going hard right till the end. There's no doubt about it. Love Pittsburgh tonight. Like Arizona in this spot against the Edmonton Oilers. Um, we're going to stay away from the, the money line on the Leafs uh, lightning game. Focus in on those props. And then the one other game tonight is the Blues and the Dallas Stars. Um, Dallas with a win or a point guarantees themselves the one seed. Um, there is a scenario that Dallas loses tonight. Vancouver beats the Jets on Thursday, and Dallas would end up being the number two seed and would play the Nashville Predators. Um, and Vancouver would get either L.A. or Vegas, whoever does not play the, uh, the Edmonton Oilers. So I guess technically still is something for Dallas. Uh, and I think Dallas will really try to win this game because – in all likelihood, Vegas beats the Anaheim Ducks, which would mean the Kings. And I think of all the eight teams in the playoffs, the Kings are the matchup that you'd want the most right now. And it seems like that's the way it's going to look. All right, we are going well, to get do, to... Do we want a lock shot parlay? Like maybe go like Stars and Reg, Stars on the puck line, and an Austin Matthews goal? Do we want to put something something together like that? Try to get a little better 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 of a number because let's be honest, looking at this board with a lot of uncertainty and, and teams already sorry, I shouldn't say a lot of uncertainty, with a lot of certainty of teams locking up position, there really isn't much on the board that I like. But I mean it's not a lock shop episode without getting uh some sort of parlay on the board for us. We should. We should. Well, okay, what about Pe Penguins money line? Okay. Minus one twenty seven. Okay. Matthew's goal? Yep. Uh, I, I really like Arizona, to be honest. <laughs> I, I, I put that in. Um, well, what would it be if we put in Dallas? The thing is, I want to, I, I, I wouldn't want to put Dallas in regulation. So just I, Dallas money line? Uh, yeah, I think we just have to put in Dallas money line. Or, hmm, I think we just put one and a half on the puck line. No, no, we won't do that. Well, let's get this goal in here for Matthews. So if we go Dallas, Pittsburgh, money line, and Matthews to score, it's at plus 342. So we Perfect. probably boosted close to a uh, close to 400. Why don't we just do that? Let's do that. Let's do that. Jake, if you're listening, if you're watching, which I know you are, put that together. See if we can get Ev dog and the fellows on that and uh, put that up. But we do, Huss, we do have to get together a golf parlay. It is Wednesday. and Yes. Okay. Well, listen, we're going to get to that. I'm seeing Rod Z, the man, <laughs> loves over six and a half in the Tampa Leafs game and over one and a half in the first period. Uh, and you know, Rod Z, the Blues would have been in if they didn't go 0-3 against the Sharks. You are right. Great point.
Um, abs out round one, Huss, or what wagon are you jumping to? Hey, listen, we and this is funny. When the lines come out, I guarantee you Colorado is going to be a favorite. We're going to be getting the Jets at plus money. Listen, could they lose for sure? But the value will be on Winnipeg. Winnipeg was 3-0 and this season. They swept the season series against Colorado. Biggest game of the year on Saturday. The Jets went in and annihilated them 7-0. Gorgiev is completely rattled right now. And Hellebuck is playing at the height of his powers, ready to win another Vesna. I will be riding with the Jets in that one. I mean, go figure. But just from a betting standpoint, I'm expecting it to be kind of Colorado minus 130, minus 135, Winnipeg getting plus 110, plus 115, something like that. And I will be more than happy to take it. Oh, and by the way, that Jets line has been moving quite a bit for the cup. We were all over the 20 to 1. WS tiers and lock shop betters bet it. It was at 15 yesterday, but I did look. It's actually back to 17 today. So kind of settled at maybe a little bit more of a reasonable number. Hey, listen, before we get to the golf, um, we got to get going here. Let's uh, get the keyword today, folks. You know what to do. Uh, today's keyword for... The E-S-T-Y-E-G, flyaway. Today's keyword is chance. Chance, C-H-A-N-C-E. So uh, you know what to do, folks. Uh, send in, let me make sure I've got that email, uh, the details of it. What you need to do is text the keyword to 780-218-9999. Zach to come will call the qualifier. Awanik's going to take over in about 10 minutes or so. So stay by your phone to get an entry. Again, text right now the keyword chance to 780-218-9999. All right, P. Greggy, let's get to it. RBC Heritage coming off of the Masters. This is elevated field. I mean, the big boys are there. I'm still not sure Scotty Scheffler plays this tournament on the weekend. He's at plus 450. I think the odds are sort of showing that they think that he might not be in. Um, because, listen, when you got a minus plus 450 favorite, usually the other numbers are a little bit higher. Um, just quickly for people listening, Scheffler plus 450, Xander 12, Ludwig Oberg, Pat Cantley 16, Rory 18, 20 on the board for Morikawa and Fleetwood. 28 for Homa and Fitz. Will Zalatoris, 30. Wyndham Clark, 33. Si Wu, 33. Spieth, Cam Young. Henley, 35. And a group of 40, including Sam Burns, Corey Connors, Tony Fino, Brian Harmon, Sahit the Gala, JT, and Lowry. Pat, what, uh, what's your out outrights looking like this week? Oh, did you get muted again? Are we good now? Go. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, that one was on me. I'll, I'll soak that fine. Um, it's it's very ironic that today's word is chance because I don't know if there's much of a chance for any of these guys in the field if Scotty Sheffield plays this tournament. I, I really don't. With that being said, I'm shocked come Wednesday afternoon he hasn't announced that he's withdrawn from this event. And I know the fact that it's a designated event. They have to have, you know, what is it? A certain amount of, of the designated events that they he's have to be have in. A kid. He can get the, he'll get a pass. No doubt yeah. about it. And the rest so, of the field will be pumped that he's pulling out. <laughs> exactly. So I think he's probably doing all his appearances that he's been, you know, told that he has to do come Wednesday evening or Thursday morning. I think we get, get some sort of word that he's withdrawn. And like you said, I don't think we see much movement in regards to the outrights because I think the odds makers are kind of going with that. So uh, RBC Heritage, um, you know, it, it's uh, a same, same golf course every year. And it's one of the more unique golf courses. This is why this is a designated event uh, at Hilton Head here um, in Harbortown. The fact is that this is a very short course. It's a very uh, a driving course that you need to be accurate. A lot of the long bombers actually haven't done well on this course because you can't just grip it and rip it here. You have to be very accurate off mm -hmm. the tee. 
it's also one of the most most challenging putting courses uh, on tour and some of the smallest greens. If not, I, correct me if I'm wrong, um, the smallest greens on tour. So, I believe so you have to look at guys who are, who's accurate off the tee, whose approach game is strong, and who has the ability, if it does turn into a putting contest, hit some bombs here. Well, Ludwig Oberg, he's the guy that kind of checks every box when you think about it. He is built in a lab to be a professional golfer. We talked about him on Monday. This guy's destined for greatness. Until further notice, I think I'm just going to blindly bet Oberg every single week. Uh, Max Homa, uh, you know, was last week a little bit of just uh, uh, you know flash in the pan, or has Homa turned a corner? I think he has. The other thing, his putter was absolutely dialed, uh, especially on Sunday. Um, so he's a guy that at twenty eight to one, I thought his number was going to be way lower considering how well he played at the Masters. His number did not move at all. So I like him at twenty eight to one. I think he's maybe found something here. Uh, see the gal, I cannot believe I'm going back to him again. I'm going back to the well with him, but he's played really well here. He finished inside the top 10. I think it was a T I think it might even been a T five finish here last year. When you look at his game, he is a magician with the putter. He's a guy that can scramble really well. And when his irons are on his approach shots, he's going to be able to find those small greens. Shane Lowry is another one as well at that 40 to one. I like him as well. He plays really well at Pete Dye courses as well. I think um, I was looking at Matt Vincenzi's uh, preview for the week and in his model, he actually has Shane Lowry, the number one course fit for here. The thing that he was kind of afraid of and which I'm also afraid of is the putting. The putting on Sundays has been a concern for Shane Lowry for a long time, but he is a great approach player. He's a guy that's very accurate off the tee. So I like Lowry here. His number, though, when I bet it earlier this week, it was 60 to 1. It's dropped all the way to 40. So there's obviously some steam on him coming into this tournament. So I try to keep a little bit of a tidier card uh, with the four there, kind of in between 16 to 40. Don't really have any long bombs. I'm open to some suggestions. Uh, but I think I'm definitely going to bet uh, Akshay Bhatia uh, top 20 for him to finish here as well. Cause I think this fits his course uh, or sorry, he fits the course really nicely here. Um, I'm with you on Oberg and I am in at 16 to one. I kind of have a feeling the more people pay attention to this guy, we're not going to see 16s up no. for him uh, very often. So I'm in on that. I think I'm only making one other outright and I'm going to stick with the guy that disappointed me and pissed me off big time last week. In Matthew Fitzpatrick at 28 to 1. I love this number for Fitz. And listen, he was not far off it. And a couple of the mistakes that he made at the Masters, I'm not sure are awaiting him at the RBC Heritage. Um, he also won this tournament last year. I mean, he's going there as the defending champ. He'll have a good feeling. He beat Speeth in a playoff last year. Um, I certainly think he can win. So I love the number at 28 to 1. Um, the other guy that I'm looking at for a top 20 is our guy, Corey Connors. Uh, he's an RBC guy. He's played this event. Uh, I'm just looking as I pulled this up. So this is his performances in the last three years at the RBC Heritage. 21-22, he was T12. Last year, he was T31. Excuse me. Yeah, last year he was uh, two zero thirty one, and that was his that was his worst appearance, uh, or sorry, his worst uh, uh, score that he's posted uh, at RBC. He's played well T here. T four the year before. In fact, I can think I could even get behind a top ten. Yeah, uh, for Corey Connors, but yeah. I would love to have Corey in his top twenty in a parlay. Yeah. Um, I mean, do we want to go Ludwig? top 10 which yeah. is plus 130 and then mix that in with maybe Fitzpatrick and Connor's top 20 I'd be okay with that I know I'm not on uh Connor's he was definitely like when I was going through a lot of my research he his he's eighth in stroke gain total at this course over the past 36 rounds the only reason I was afraid to put an outright on him 
is his putter can go south very quickly. Yeah. Um, Let's but if it, you just play it safe and put yeah. 20 for, uh, but if, for them. But Haas had showed in the past when it catches fire, like he can't miss. And at a course like this, he might not even really need to, to, to dial in the putter because the greens are so small. He might put it beside the cup every single approach shot and he doesn't even need to, to worry about two putting. So, uh, I, and a top 20 for sure. I think Dusty was on Fitz as well. Correct me if I'm wrong. So, he he'll be fine with Fitz. I think he's going to be fine with Oberg. I know he's a big fan of him. So if we go, yeah, Fitzy, he is on with Fitz. It, he's with Fitzy, with Fitz. Lowry, and yeah. Poston. So we're both aligned on 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 Lowry as well. But we yeah, got to we got to make a top ten for Ludwig because his top yes. twenty is minus two hundred. Yeah, no, that can't. So happen. We put that together. So let's. I can't put this together in the uh, in the thing. So the the numbers though for what we're putting into the parlay. Ludwig plus 130, Fitz minus one, uh, Ludwig top 10 plus 130, Fitz minus 135 for a top 20, and Corey Connors uh, plus 100, uh, plus Perfect. 100 for a top 10, or top 20, excuse me, for Corey Connors. If you do like CC, um, top 10 is 260, <clears throat> top five is six to one in his outright is 40. Um, but I think that's pretty good, Patty. We got a little partner parlay yeah. to go with what's left of the NHL slate for tonight. And Can't then uh, we got a good golf one in there. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm fired up. We're, uh, we are in the thick of it. This is one of the best times to be a sports fan. It's one of the best times to be a sports better and uh, even better time to be on cool bet quickly before we do roll here for the Greggy's golf special. I've got two this week. Uh, we cashed right. the cup parlay last week, obviously with the designated event. Uh, there's no cut line at this one. So uh, I kind of put two together here. The one, obviously, these are guys that I like. Uh, Ludwig Aber uh, Oberg, Seth de Gala, and Akshay Batia, all to finish in the top 20 at plus 850. Uh, and then the other one. These are two guys that I really like at this tournament but can't possibly stomach placing an outright bet on them because I know they will just not win here. Xander Shoffley, Tommy Fleetwood, both to finish top 10, plus 550. Those guys can't close out events. They haven't closed out events. Xander hasn't won since, what, the Olympics. Fleetwood's never won in North America. I'd love to see him finish. I just don't know if it's here. But I can almost guarantee you, even if he starts out slow, we could see him backdoor his way into a top 10. So, uh, and Xander, to be honest, by all the analytics, man, you look at it, this course should be tailor-made for him. I just cannot, cannot put my hard-earned money on Xander Shoffley right now to win a tournament. I really can't. Yeah, and I wonder what he's like. I listen. He grinded it out and came through for us for the top ten last week. Yeah. Um, and you know, you get that. I mean, like he's always going to be cash and checks. It's just is he getting trophies? And uh, right now, it doesn't seem to be happening. Um, you can get the Greggy's golf specials in the golf boosted odds specials in the Cool Bet exclusives. Lock shot partner parlay is not up yet, uh, but we'll get that one in for the hockey. Again, it's a Matthews goal, Pittsburgh and Dallas money line tonight. And then I'm also on Arizona. I will be betting that zone of uh, money <laughs> line uh, on its own, plus 154. I bet if you're going to do that, I'd say do it now. Here's a little prediction. We'll talk about it. But I bet that's below plus 140 by the time the puck drops. Maybe even 135 or so. I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of action coming in on Zona in this final game. Um, and again, we'll get the golf pick up as well. Corey Connors and Matthew Fitzpatrick, top 20. And our guy, the 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 crush of the lock shop, Ludwig Ober, <laughs> top 10. We'll put that together for you and, uh, and do it as well. Patty, great stuff. I can't wait to have Jake on tomorrow. We'll get his thoughts on you. He might be in a great mood if the Jays can pull this one off today, be on a five-game beater on the off day. We'll be hitting that with Jake. But I can't wait to just find out where his head's at going into Boston for game one of the playoffs next week. It's going to be fun. And we should have, I would say, by that time, I would expect series prices on some of the series, at least the five that we know already. Probably maybe even later on today. We'll keep an eye on Cool Bet. We'll, we'll definitely talk about those tomorrow on the Lock Shop. Patty, thanks so much. Everyone in the chat, thanks for hanging out. We're going to turn it over 
to uh, the brains of the operation, Matthew Iwanek. And I think Maddie's going to call the winner from the keyword and join us tomorrow, 11 a.m. Edmonton time, noon here in the peg, one out east for the lock shop. Final day of NHL regular season action. A look ahead to the playoffs, a little NBA, some baseball tomorrow as well. And uh, we'll see how our guys are doing at the RBC Heritage as well. We'll see you then, folks. We'll turn it over to Iwanek. Have a great day. Shout out to the EST listeners and viewers. And a thank you to Huss and Patty there for uh, passing things off. Uh, I'll, I'll gladly write down the uh, brains of the operation. Dusty's not here. Dusty's not here. I'll just uh, just go around with that, and uh, I'll make sure everyone knows around here I'm the brains of the operation over the next week while Dusty's not here. Zach to come is going to find out. Trev's going to find out how much I'll make them actually really work because I'm now in charge. I told Dusty as he was walking out of the building yesterday that I'm going to change the locks on him. And it's now not going to be the Nielsen show with Lieutenant Eric. It's going to be the Lieutenant Eric show with Glue Guy. And we're just going to change everything. And he's going to come back to, to our thing, and he won't be allowed in anymore. Maybe we'll find him a spot. Uh, it is time now uh, to qualify someone for the EST Flyaway. Zach comes giving someone a call right now. Uh, we only have one more other chance to qualify today. That's coming up on the oil stream. Myself and Tom Gazzola will get you set for the Oilers game against the Arizona Coyotes tonight. The last game in Coyotes history, potentially. Um... We'll see what happens with the Coyotes moving forward. But also the Oilers, their second last game of the regular season. They'll get going uh, next week. We'll look ahead towards uh, what we think the Oilers might have to face uh, when it comes to the playoffs. But we will have the EST fly away. And then after that, what do we've got? We've got tomorrow. We've got Friday. We've got one chance on Hello Hockey on Saturday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday next week to qualify. So not many more opportunities get into this trip to Las Vegas. Thanks to our wonderful partners, the LVCVA out in Vegas, as well as Flywide. The Edmonton International Airport, flyyeg.com for more information. Nonstop flights to over 50 destinations, including Las Vegas. Um, two flights, three nights accommodations, tickets to Cirque. That's what we're trying to give away for you uh, next Friday, April 26th on The Morning Show. Uh, for those that don't know the details fully, uh, we'll call someone. In the morning, you got to pick up if you're one of those qualifiers. So keep your phone on between 6 and 9 o'clock next Friday because if uh, we're calling you, you're going to want to pick up to know that you are off to Vegas. And if you are the winner, uh, you will have two months to book that trip with 12 months to fly. So you got lots of time uh, to book that trip and figure out exactly when you want to go. We're not putting something that you have to make work Within our schedule, you can make it work within your schedule. So, uh, Zach, I'm trying to get a hold of someone. I don't know if um, someone didn't answer or if he's – what's going on there? But he is working on that right now. So, uh, here's the thing. If you text it in at some point, if you text it in chance – Keep your phone on. Keep an eye on it. Because Zach to come will call someone momentarily here. He's, I, I see him typing in the phone the phone number. I will do quick play-by-play -play of this part here. He, he's typing in the phone number. He's smiling. He's click call. The phone's going to be ringing right away. So if if your phone and you know lights up in the next few seconds, it's Zacticum. You're going to want to pick up. Also to Sheldonologist on Twitter. Thank you for the uh, the gif on Twitter. Going with uh, I'm the captain now. Look at me, gif. Uh, that's that's me. It's my place now, boys. I'm I'm running it. Dusty's not here. We're changing everything. Belzy lives here. Well, here's the thing. Sean Bell's still here from the hangout. If anyone missed it, Belzy and Mac T were on. It was great. Gager makes himself at home all the time, too. You just... Well, I'm fine with that. We'll talk about that right away. I'm on the air right now. Uh, finishing this. So, so so we'll plan the hangout a little bit later. But, uh, you know, you just bring a pair of slippers like Gager does. Uh, why not? Why wouldn't you bring your own pair of slippers? Make yourself really comfortable. <laughs> but yeah, Gager does it. You could. What we well, this is just a big clubhouse for all of us. We're just here to hang out and have a good time. And and Belzy's still sticking around. Uh, Maxi got out of here as quickly as possible. He was done with us. But it was a great hangout. Thanks for Craig McTavish for taking some time for us. And Tommy did a great job booking uh, today's hangout. Uh, Zach to come talking to someone right now. Uh, like I said, oil stream coming up uh, in a few minutes here on Edmonton Sports Talk live on iHeartRadio on TuneIn, EdmontonSportsTalk.com, as well as on YouTube. Uh, there is a lot to get to on that. We'll also want your thoughts. 780-218-9999 or uh, the nasty chat. What are your favorite Arizona County memories? Do you have any? 
I have a I have a buddy. Uh, Tom knows him too. Uh, he's actually a big Coyotes fan. Uh, I will share his thoughts on this move uh, to Arizona right away. But, uh, Zach, we got our qualifier on the line now? Yeah, we do. And I actually made one call. Um, somebody didn't pick up, and then I made a second call. But on the second call, I swapped one of the numbers while dialing it in. So, so I you? called somebody completely random. They didn't know what was going on. And then now we got the right number. We got Mike on the line. So you cracked under the pressure there. That's what happened there, Zach. <laughs> Mike, congratulations. You're into the draw to the trip to Vegas. Have you ever been to Vegas before? A couple of times, actually. Have you? What's your favorite thing? To, what's your favorite thing to do in Vegas? You know what? Go to the uh, Grand Canyon or, oh, or yeah? uh, watch the UFC is a good time too. And if you win this draw, like, what would you try to plan it around to get out there? Is there a certain time, or you're pretty open right now to when you would go to Vegas? So, like a sports guy, so honestly, it would be the uh, try to parlay a hockey game, a football game, the whole nine years. That'd be oh. sweet. Very smart, very smart, making a nice big sports weekend. Well, Mike, congratulations. You're into the draw. Keep your phone on next Friday during the morning show because if you're the winner, the boys will give you a call, let you know that you are off to Vegas. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And that will wrap up the lock shop for today. Coming up in mere minutes, uh, it is... Do we always play the music at the end of the show? Okay. Coming up next, it is uh, Tommy, myself. It is the oil stream here on EmmetonSportsTalk.com. Don't go anywhere.